thank you very much for joining us on uh, the Resonate podcast. It's an absolute privilege and a pleasure to finally be able to sit down and chat to you. Oh, and uh, to see you. Thank, thank you for inviting me. Wow, what a journey you have been on. Mm-hmm. What an absolute amazing, mm-hmm. phenomenal mm-hmm. legacy that you leave. Thank Can you. you sort of reflect on your time and in terms of the life of more music. Well, and I first started it in 1996, which is 30 odd years ago. And I was employed first by Lancaster City Council to be the administrator for a new project, only a short term project mm-hmm. in the West End of Morecambe. And that was to be support this very strange man called Pete Moser, who um, was working out of arts and events as a peripatetic community musician. Mm-hmm. And I think the job was only meant to be two days a week for six months or something. Yeah. So here we are, <laughs> here we are 30 odd years later and I'm, I'm still here, but about to go. I spent a lot of time in Palatine Hall, which was, we were part mm. of the city council. But what was funny was about having a place for employees yeah. so they could have a drink, have a cup of tea, yes. go to the bathroom. And that was um, part of how, this, that's how we ended up in this building. And we just had a, a very small corner of it to start with. And I spent a lot of time here after we'd moved from Palatine Hall in the corner of this <laughs> huge building, working away um, while Pete was out. But some, I think there were some community musicians as part of that. So part of the funding was about employing local people. Mm. And I was the first. And then there were four community musicians. Mm. And the project actually was a three-year funded project by the Single Regeneration Budget. Yeah. So we were one of quite a lot of projects that were mm. in Morecambe and, and in the West End. Out of all of them, I think there's us left in the West End. Yeah. And the foyer is another one. Mm. And what, I, what was Furniture Matters? Then it became Bulky Matters, but was a project from the same funding. In terms of coming together and making things happen, what was, what was that like? It was really exciting because at that point, City Council had money. They had some very visionary people who worked there. Uh, Charles Wilson was a mm-hmm. city architect, they had an architect. Mm-hmm. And there was another chap called Reg Haslam, who was in charge of economic development and culture and the arts sat underneath economic development. So, Mm -hmm. you know, they saw years and years ago the difference that providing incredible activities could could make to local people Mm -hmm. and to the economy. Mm -hmm. So at the time, in 1996, or certainly 97, there were a whole raft of festivals that were run and organized and supported by the city council. So it was very, very vibrant. You know, there were peripatetic promenaders, Mm -hmm. there uh, there was all kinds of things, the Light and Water Festival, which wasn't a city council one. There was a heritage festival, which has been kind of subsumed. The legacy of that is vintage, which is yeah. amazing. Yeah, um, and WOMAD as well. And there was WOMAD. Yeah. It was a good time to be here. And the things that we did within that context were street bands festival, where we brought street bands from all over the country to participate in Morecambe and to play in Lancaster, actually. And we did the one-man band shebang, which was Pete's pet project, bringing one-man bands from all over the the place to play. We're very much part of that festival, cultural ecology, really, which was really vibrant. And it was at that point we, it felt like Morecambe was was going to change. Yeah. But sadly, it kind of went the other way. Yeah. So the city council lost the resources to put on that kind of work. And I don't think there were any festivals for a really long time until we started the Kite Festival. You know, it's gone in various phases. Morecambe Town Council funded lots of festivals when they came into being. And again, it's gone up and down since since Covid, I suppose. Things work in cycles, I would imagine. So do, yeah. But in terms of you and Pete sort of spearheading an organisation that's kind of fundamentally responsible for the cultural regeneration of an area, how does that feel sort of looking back on that legacy? Oh, I don't think you can claim that responsibility, but it's been a privilege and a pleasure to be part of it. I, I mean, I think particularly in Morecambe, there weren't any other arts organisations mm. and now there were lots, mm. you know, we were definitely the first people that were doing anything kind of cultural or in the community, I would say. Mm. You know, you've got amazing people like Deco Public, you've got Good Things yeah. Collective, you've got the new, uh, those new, art, lovely new artists in the Arndale Jewellers and uh, quite yeah. a lot of artists working out of the Arndale Centre. So that uh, makes me very happy to to think we've played some kind of small part in in that. 
in terms of more music then because obviously when i first knew it was more music in morecambe yeah and as i've observed it's really evolved to become not just regional wide but national and international mm -hmm. what kind of um highlights from that journey can you maybe identify yeah. with those times as, as you've grown too many to mention really yeah. i mean there have been some really significant and, and poignant moments you know not least of all would, would be the work that developed after the morgan bay tragedy mm -hmm. uh, which has just had its 20th anniversary which yeah. we commemorated i think we commemorated it really beautifully yeah. and um very proud that we were able to, to do that. That that took us on a, an incredible journey. Mm. You know, lots of us ended up going to Hong Kong. We delivered an amazing piece that Pete created in different communities around the country. We went to Liverpool. We performed in Newcastle and London. We took people from this community and shared the story of what had happened here, but um, involved people in those different contexts to create material that contributed to it. So that was, that was really powerful and really important because it raised awareness of, sadly, issues that are really prevalent today, like migrant workers, yeah. who are undocumented migrant workers. It, it highlighted all those issues, ideally with a, the hope that people would have more empathy, more sympathy to people and strangers that come into their communities. But I think times are, times are difficult for people now and it's hard to welcome strangers sometimes. Although having said that, more music is always very welcoming in terms of the yeah, yeah, yeah. West End and Morecambe and broadly, in terms of you work a lot with, uh, with the Polish community, the Chinese community, those at risk, those in care and out of care, and obviously um, the travelling community as well. So I've always seen the organisation as a very welcoming and opening place. Yeah. That's our ethos, you know, it's about inclusivity and there's something, hopefully there's something here for everyone. Um, you know, you, you can't. You can't work with everybody all the time. I would hope that our, our message is one of welcome and inclusivity, yeah. That must feel like a really good place to, to leave an organisation as, as you leave as executive director. I'm sad to leave. Mm. I think it's, a, a, it's an amazing organisation. I think the values established the organisation remain intact. I think that's why we've succeeded, because we've, we haven't changed what we've said we'd do. Our mission statement yeah. remains the same, so... so so yeah, I'm proud of that. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm proud of that. The relationships that you've had with the local authority, with the city council, and also more widely regionally with the with Lancashire Music Hub. How do you sense that relationship and partnership? And how, how do you think it is? So we've always worked in Lancashire. It's been part of our remit. That's why we dropped the more music, mm -hmm. the in Morecambe bit of more music in Morecambe, because we did a early in the early days we did significant amount of work with the youth and community service when there was such a thing in, yeah. in Lancashire. Yeah. So I think a, there were some questions within Lancashire County Council about why are we bringing people in from Morecambe or why has it got a Morecambe brand when they're working in Bake Up or they're working mm -hmm. in... So we dropped the in Morecambe bit. So we've always worked across the county. Our relationship with Lancashire Music Hub kind of became, became more of a partnership with, with funding from youth music and when the hubs were first established. So we, we would do the odd thing with Lancashire Music Service. When the National Plan for Music Education yeah. was established, yeah. um, the, the remit was to work with music services and other providers to ensure that all children got access to the kind of music making that they needed or wanted. Yeah. And so our approach is, is community music. It's a very different approach to the more formal methods adopted by the music service. So we came in as part of that and we were funded by Youth Music, who is one of our core funders, mm -hmm. to help make change within music services, to make them more inclusive, to make them consider who else who else was in their community, who was, yeah. which children weren't making music in schools, how how that we could help them. So that was that's the relationship with the music hub. And to help them become more inclusive. Yes. And that was, there were 13 organisations across the country that were tasked with that, and mm -hmm. we did that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we have done that. Mm -hmm. You know, the, I think the Music Hub has an inclusion strategy. Mm -hmm. We commissioned the writing of an inclusion strategy for them. We sit on their SEND working party. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of influence that I think we brought to something that's quite a traditional structure. And that's good. Absolutely. You know, the 
whether it's technology or young people's band work, yes. our approach, they've adopted some of those things and that's, that's really positive, yeah. I think you're right. I think in order for music education survival, it needs to adapt and it needs yeah. to look more broadly and more inclusively, at especially the young people now. It's always been something which I've always looked to more music as kind of the organisation that, for me, just get it right because through being fortunate enough to be involved in some of that work too. Mm. It's changed my mind to almost come into a situation where rather than coming with, I'm going to be teaching you something, to look at looking more flexibly with who you are working with and then take it almost like from a young person lead. Absolutely. You know, it's been a massive shift in my mindset. Musicians that work with us yes. are now working for the music service, Absolutely. which is quite interesting, which shows a kind of a willingness to change direction for mm -hmm. them, I think. It can only be good, can't it? Absolutely. But, um, it means, it, you know, it means that we will be able to learn from one another. Yeah, and, absolutely. You know. And I think what you're saying about the young people is absolutely critical. We, we, in, I mean, we work across the community mm -hmm. and with people of all ages, but the young people's work is very much led by young people mm -hmm. and their voices. Mm -hmm. We work really hard to make sure their voices are heard. Mm -hmm. And they're making the music that they want to make and not the music we think they should. And that's gone in peaks and troughs, yeah. you know, the, the styles of music that are the, the genres, that's what you see over, mm -hmm. <laughs> over time. I'm hungry almost to look broadly at what is possible and I think that seeing more music in other organisations inspire that change is really, is really, really powerful. Yeah, it's, well. it's very interesting though, so we, we you know, have the opportunities for young people to work in tech and we've got a really lovely project which is funded by the Music Hub which is called Live Circuit and that's yeah. about technology and guitars and, you know, keyboards. So that's a fusion, a fusion project which is really interesting. But we do see very, very many young people want to pick up a guitar. Yeah. Very many people want to pick up a guitar or play the drums or sing. Yeah. So we've got our end of term gig on Friday and it will be mostly bands I reckon mm -hmm. and some singer-songwriters mm -hmm. and um, some singing groups. The live circuit people will, will perform but it, there is a real connection to that traditional style of music making yeah. really, which I think is rather lovely because the world is so full of tech. We've spoken to Derek Mays from the Musicians Co-op and spoken to uh, Chris Joyce, former drummer for oh, yeah. Simply yeah. Red. How do you see music in terms of the district then, in terms of how this resurgence seems to be happening? Well, Lancaster's always had an amazing mm. uh, music scene. I think we, over, over the years, were able to offer first steps for musicians and then they would be able to go to the musicians' co-op yeah. and then they would pay their gigs at the Yorkshire House. That, that has a real big gap there. I would say um, yes. now because those spaces don't exist yet no. but the music co is going to come back which will be amazing yeah. but I think things like Lancaster Music Festival and, and to an extent Morecambe Music Festival we're working with both of them yeah. you know the, there's a real drive to re, regenerate uh, grassroots music mm -hmm. we've been working on a Lancaster City Council project with a fund All right. funded by Arts Council Grassroots oh, yeah. a, called the Grassroots Project mm -hmm. and which the City Council applied for and got. And we were, we've been supporting them to programme young local support acts for, for bands that they've been bringing to the platform. And actually they brought, they used our venue because they thought the platform was going to close, but it's not. Yeah. So, so there's, a, there's, there's a definite interest and a recognition that, that there's, a, there's a kind of a, there's a gap yes. now. Mm. And I, there's that. People are working hard to fill that space, mm. really. But I think the music seems pretty vibrant around here. Yeah. Even in Morecambe, I was on the bus the other day and there's <laughs> some people talking about, oh, and if you go to the pier, there's so-and-so uh -huh. on between four and six. Uh -huh. And then you can go to the old bank yes. has music on. Yeah. So I think that it's becoming, there are more opportunities for people to play and more opportunities for people to experience yeah. live music, which is what it's all about, really. I can understand sadness to leave the role, but also I would imagine looking back and thinking, wow, what a ride that was to be able to sort of see it being left in a really positive state. It's a fantastic organisation. Yeah. I mean, it's an amazing team of people who have been really committed. Yeah. A lot of people have worked here mm. a long time. A lot of people have come through the programme. 100%. Gone away, come back, and 
you know, yeah. people like Leroy, people like Ash. Yeah. And you've got people who are working abroad as yeah, well in yeah, yeah. Germany. And uh, I've seen others who used to be here as part of stages as well. They've now gone on to do some incredible yeah. work as well. So Absolutely, yeah. I mean, that is all thanks to this place. I mean, yeah. it's called more music, but it's called the Hot House the hot for a reason because yeah. it was a hotbed of activity and it's always been a, certainly for me as a, as a kind of out of towner, not a non-local resident who became a local resident, um, a phenomenal beacon of, of good practice and of, of excitement and risk taking and um, mm, yeah. in the midst of everything that's happened politically and financially, you have all work together as a team, you've all survived and you've all pushed yeah, through and it's been yeah, really, really good. Yeah, thing. it has. Yeah, yeah. we have. <laughs> I think it's I think it for me certainly I want to say that certainly on the record because I think it's important that that it is said. For me personally, being like a tourist, I've always enjoyed the work and I've always admired it. What tips would you give Ooh. to the incoming executive director? What would you say if you were to sort of leave a note on the desk or if you were to sort of say any any advice you would give to the next generation who take on the mantle what would you say listen listen to people mm -hmm. listen to what people say and there's a lot of wisdom yeah. around yeah. Um, there's a lot of people in this community who only want the best for the community yeah. but a lot of people doing really really great work mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah listen yeah I think, and good luck, <laughs> and um, yeah. what a great job, you know, it's a great job, it's a great organisation, and um, yeah. Amazing. It amazing. is amazing. In terms of, I know you'd said on recent interviews that, you know, you're looking forward to going for long walks and to getting more politically active, I was wondering if you could maybe talk more about those sorts of long things, <laughs> I'd love to um, touch on some of that. I've always been something of an activist, mm -hmm. and I'm keen to put some energy into that work. I don't know if you know, but I went to Calais twice to the what was the jungle right, uh, yeah. there. I'm very interested in, in working with refugees and asylum seekers. Mm -hmm. and I did quite a bit of work with the mm -hmm. people who were at the Strathmore for a while. We offered, um, oh, right. we took music there. Mm -hmm. We did some, uh, we'd be, we were still doing music, uh, language lessons mm -hmm. here. I'm quite involved in the uh, Palestinian campaign. Yeah ceasefire campaigns yes. I'd like to get more involved in that but I wish it was over so yeah. one didn't need to be involved in that there's a very active passionate group of people mm -hmm. uh, particularly in Lancaster mm -hmm. and, and a few from Morecambe but you know if we want an inclusive world mm -hmm. we have to stop bombing people <laughs> yeah well exactly in terms of music and its role I think just following on from the lessons of, of more music to seek inclusivity and to listen and to learn and to get involved and to understand and mm, to be mm. empathetic towards others. Would you say that would be one way forward that your activism, oh my goodness. Hard word to say. Would that, be, to <laughs> <laughs> would that be one thing that you hope your activism would hope to help to encourage a sense of unity and understanding? Oh, absolutely, yeah. People are just people, aren't they, yeah. at the end of the day, really? How do you hope to use music as a tool to help with activism? Well, weirdly, you and I'm not really a musician. <laughs> so, I think music is, uh, I mean, I like singing, I sing. Yeah, music is definitely a tool for bringing people together. Yeah. And singing particularly is an amazingly unifying and powerful thing to do mm. in groups. It's amazing that you say that you don't think of yourself as a, a musician, but yet you do sing, because ultimately... Oh, we, you don't have heard me sing. You know, but, you know, but in terms of you, you are, you are making music, and so therefore, yeah. for me, you are a, yeah. a musician. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, a world without music and a world without the arts would yeah. be a it's very desolate place. That's why I think it's exciting that young people want to play guitars. Yeah and drums mm. and trumpets and you know I think it's something that's so innate and so we're born to do that thing and I think technology and it is an enabler can also be a barrier to yeah. self-expression. Yeah. Yeah. What's been one of your music educational highlights personally in terms of who, who's inspired you? What musician or band or experience has inspired you the most? What, here? In general, in, in, in it, life. Oh gosh, so many. Mm. Many, many, many. I've always really loved music. I grew up in a house that was full of, full of music. Mm. Uh, my dad was a drummer. 
Wow. Did you get involved in drumming? Did he ever teach you? No, no, no. I kept that really secret for quite a long time. And it was only kind of when we grew up, he kind of resumed his jazz career. Wow. It's quite interesting, very interesting. Yeah. Um, too many to mention, really. I've been to some great gigs. I've been to some great festivals. I've seen some incredible classical mm -hmm. concerts. I've been very, very privileged, really, to see music all over, all over the world and all over the country. Yeah. yeah, I think maybe when asking that question, I was maybe thinking about you know, was there any catalyst in your early years that 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 made you think, I want to do this work? Was there anything that made you see music for the powerful tool that it is? I did play actually in a punk band very briefly. Amazing. <laughs> what did you play? Called, called the Plague. Huh? I sang actually. I didn't play uh -huh. the Plague. Any recordings of that? No, one? no, 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 no. Really? No, no, oh, no. no. Very long time ago. You know, really? It's very funny. Punk, I loved. I really yeah. did. So who was in the plague? Tell me more about the the band. There's a, another woman called well, she, well girl, girl, Julie McNamara, who's a su very successful theatre maker now. Amazing lead singer who was a bit Bob Geldoffy at the time. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Called Selby Dickinson. Uh -huh. um, Alex Creed was the guitarist, and then a, a, another guy called Mark Dennis. So this was all on the Wirral and uh, in, oh, the, really? in the end of the 70s and early 80s. Yeah. It was really fun. Yeah, but well, I was just going to say, I mean, what punk influences did you have then, back then? And, well, I always really liked the Ramones. Yeah. And, I, and The Clash, I was a really, that was a, an amazing gig I saw at the Apollo once at the, oh. with The Clash. They might be Manchester. Yeah. Yeah. That's my, one of my favourite venues. And I always, I always loved women who were doing it, you know, yeah. like Susie Sue yeah. and, and Blondie, you yeah. know, I, I just, well, people like that. But even earlier, you know, like people like Susie Quattro, I just thought these people were Cindy Lauper I really like. You oh, know, I thought these oh. I thought these women were extraordinary, yeah. you know, um, and really forging a pattern. And of course I was a big Madonna fan, not so mm -hmm. now, but, mm -hmm. um, Wow, so it sounds like a lot of inspiration. And I would have loved to have seen what kind of a sound the plague was, was making. <laughs> I don't know if you would. <laughs> I bet but, oh, yeah, I wonder if anybody has got anything. I suppose funny. I mean we could all look back funny, on funny, funny. early music making experiences and sort of shudder. But then at the same time you were out and you were doing it and you were you know you were Yeah, but it was very small beans you were now. Uh, still still you were out and you were doing it. You wasn't playing the Apollo. Um, yeah. Wow. Well, I know, but you were out and you were Oh you were it's fun. Yeah, yeah. That was fun. Yeah. Some rock against racism gigs. Oh so maybe yeah, that was when music is activism. Yeah. That was all in the ether then. Mm. Mm. It's all a bit sad, really. We kind of, like you said, it goes in cycles. Yeah. We're kind of back to 19. So, yeah. Yes. So much amazing music. Mm. The jam, the specials, all of that. Like, you know, kind of great times. The 70s and the 80s are much derided for the music, but I think, yeah. I think they were some great days. Those artists have grown, they've recognised they need a new generation of fans. And so they've almost like some of the sounds. Yeah. The popularity of, for example, soundtracks to Stranger Things is used, that kind of yeah, 80s yeah, electronic yeah, sound, you know, yeah. although you feel it was a small part, it was a significant time, a significant part to play, and you were out and you were doing it. You were, <laughs> you, you were using your voice positively, using your skills, music skills, and you were using your political activism, which I said right this time, um, to, for a force for but it, yeah. good quite interesting you don't think it's only saying that uh, speaking to you now that makes me think oh okay we did that then oh, yeah. you know yes yeah. doing stuff that's different and fresh and feels like it's important i think is i think a really important thing for young people to, to get involved in and the more people that help make those opportunities available the better that music making yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Mm. it's definitely about the, op the opportunities and, and the young people being prepared to take them really there's a lot of anxiety and lack of confidence I would say, mm. post-COVID in young mm. people. So, you know, you see the way the young people behave and the way they interact yeah. is very different to the young people we were seeing 10 years ago, 15 years ago. 100%. That's the case in schools as well. It feels like it takes longer somehow to get them to a place. It's a bit of a hope and a wish, but 2024 being a chance for a, a renewal, yeah. fresh start. Yeah. Sounds like a, it feels like a good time to, to try I think, something new. I think we're coming in at the end of a big, a big moment. Mm. There's lots of stuff in the air. It's going to be a massive eclipse in two weeks. Amazing. See, see what, there's a lot of astral stuff yeah. going on. Oh, right. Excellent. Um, apparently. I'm not a, 
an astrologer, but I don't you, think Blue are. <laughs> are you interested in astrological and? Yeah, I am. Um, yeah. What kind of things have you been involved in? Oh, I haven't really, but I'm interested in. I'm interested in astrology and how 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 the world operated and people navigated around the world using the stars. You know, that's astronomy, but yeah. you know, there's got to be stuff around nature and the way the moon affects the tide. There's got to be something that affects all of us mm -hmm. in that. I mean, and astron astrology is incredibly scientific. Yeah. You know, and all that navigation, nautical navigation is all based on all of that. So I'm, I'm not, I haven't really done anything about it, but I'm, I, I'm kind of interested in it. Yeah, it sounds like something that you could definitely pursue now, I think. Yeah, no, just, it's just, it, it is, it, I find it interesting. Yeah. yeah. It can't just, we can't, we can't, we do not control mm. everything, do we? Mm. I don't think we can possibly. Mm -hmm. There are I other forces at work that are out there. Much larger than ourselves. Definitely. We, we have to remind ourselves that we are a yeah. small Spe part of yeah. that. Uh -huh. And we aren't as significant perhaps as we would like to oh, think yeah. that we are. Like, absolutely, yeah. How interesting, that, how privileged do we have this level of consciousness to be able to explore these themes though and I often think about um I suppose quite recently thinking about you know the almost the metaphysical and the the universe and and thinking more broadly about these sorts of themes has been something that I've been finding as I've grown older oh, okay. have you found the, the same I think as you've kind of become more worldly wise oh yeah I've always liked stars yeah <laughs> always been had a vague kind of interest in it I have never pursued it and never studied it yeah um I'm just interested in, you know, people like Galileo and Leonardo da yeah. Vinci and what, what they did. It's, it's yeah, kind of, of it's head head mind blowing. I, I know. <laughs> no computers, no yes. satellites, no yeah. nothing. You know, no, Copernicus. I, how yeah. did they do all that stuff? Yeah. Ahead of their time in a bizarre way. And well, was their time? Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know if they were ahead. Of, I don't know. But it, no, that it kind of, it does it does fascinate me. Yeah. I don't I don't really know whether um, I'm, I'm become very good at being an astrologer, but uh, it's interesting. Yeah, definitely uh, I, interesting. I love that because because I didn't know that about you, and so and I didn't know about the the punk uh, performances <laughs> that you did. As well. Many people do. I thought, well, there you go. Where is your favourite places to? explore and lose yourself in. I love Morecambe Bay uh -huh. I do I really love uh, I mean my the place I would go I go to most because it's easy is, is Silverdale I walk around Silverdale and Arnside so those places are very um, important mm -hmm. important to me mm -hmm. uh, around the bay yeah mm -hmm. um, yeah I like I like walking everywhere mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. um, quite interested in doing you know something quite big or well, I have done a couple of really big I've done 20, two 26 mile kind of walks wow. with um, a group of other women which have been lovely to yeah. do and I quite like to do those kind of things again yeah I quite fancy you know like walking coast to coast or doing one of those big big adventure things um, yeah don't know yet Amazing. To be determined. <laughs> uh, why does Silverdale and Arnside hold a special place for you? Um, well, interestingly, my mum and dad's went there on their honeymoon. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> Quite by curiosity. Uh -huh. Why do I love it? I just love the way it changes all the time. I love the way the landscape changes. I love the way you go through. I love the way the, you, you experience nature mm -hmm. in all its different phases. Yeah. Like you can walk through through the woods to get into Jenny Brown's point and through the woods. I love, yeah, and I love when you come out of the woods uh, that you see the sea. Mm -hmm. I love it when the garlic's out and it looks like there's snow on the ground. I, it's just, it kind of just, it's sort of, it just feels quite magical. It also feels really ancient as well, which I like. Yeah. You know, I like mm -hmm. that sense of, you know, this has been here for millennia yeah. and I love that and I love also, also the way it's changing I don't know if you've been recently but soon I don't think you'll be able to walk around Jenny Brown's point because land is falling away yeah, yeah. 
Wow. I think that's all really exciting. So it's different every time you go, isn't yeah. it? It's the same walk, yeah. but it's different every time you go. And I like walking across the bay. Yeah, yeah. I've done that a few times, and the more music uh, cross bay walk is yeah. in June, so that's a really lovely thing to do. I've never done one yet. Oh, you should do one. I should definitely do one, yeah. Do one for more music. Yeah. Um, it's a nice way to meet people who yeah. are interested in, in us, and it helps raise money for more music, which is good. Fantastic. And talking of raising money for more music, <laughs> If anyone wanted to donate to the charity, what yeah. would they need to do? Just go to our website. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and donations are really, really, really welcome. Yeah, fantastic. Really we are a charity. Mom Music is a charity. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not like the, well, well, much like the guide dogs and the lifeboats. So, I mean, our, I suppose our service is just not as frontline, mm -hmm. but we operate. And um, we, we are subject to charity commission rules and so the funding we get is sometimes very restricted and we can only use it for certain pieces of work um and so yeah donations and unrestricted monies are are what keeps the building open really but oh. yeah so it's 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 an interesting jigsaw amazing well Catherine, thank you so much for your time today <laughs> thanks right. for chatting to me on the resonate You're podcast welcome. And uh, yeah, if you are interested in anything that we've spoken about, check out the links down below. And Catherine, thanks again. You're welcome.